I born in a very conservative country. Like, you know, Bangladesh is a beautiful country, as a country. But the society is really conservative. Like, we don't have the education, even a little bit, you know, about transgender, about LGBTQI plus community. So I grew up with bullying, most probably, and that makes me feel like uh, more insecure about myself. And I start to believe that I'm different and I do not exist in this world. So it was like the world was taking from me, you know, and all this bullying is not only verbal bullying, uh, physical abuse. I, I used to get punished also from my father to be walk like a boy, uh, to be talk like a boy, physical punishment. I was raped as of 15. 15 you were raped? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that was the moment like I said, I mean, it was after the rape, you know, like, we try to do something. My mom, with the fa with the police and all this, but we did not succeed. I was very sick afterward. You know, I was bleeding. I were I had a very serious health issues, so I had to admit it to the hospital. After that, I tried to commit a suicide. I couldn't succeed, and then my mom, like my mom and my uncle. They helped me to get out of the country, but I did not have any plan. I just wanted to have escape so I can survive. It was a survival escape, you know. I did not know, knew that where I'm going and how I'm going to do, you know, how I will manage. I had no idea what does mean refugee. I had no idea about Greece that much. I just knew Santorini and Mekon was that city, you know. Now it sounds like a story, but you know, it's, it was a nightmare. I mean, I, I never thought that I will be alive and I will come here. So I had to push back from Greece authority and I went back to Turkey. In the sea? They, At the sea, yeah. They in the intercepted sea. The, yeah. the boat and... Uh... After that, we were taking to Moria camp in a big hall. And then the next things I remember like, oh my God, I, I was in another, like I left a hell and I end up in a hell, honestly, you know. I've been given a tent, so I built my own tent, like a single tent, with the help of, there were some NGOs who were working in St. Moria. So I was living in my own, in a small tent. There was no, there wasn't any hygiene system, proper hygiene system. Uh, I was sleeping with sleeping bags, um, around with other mixed nationalities, you know, where I never felt safe. Uh, I was scared to going out because they were again bullying, you know, inside the camp and all this. Because it's very easy in South Asia when you see, even in Arab countries, when you see a person, it's like the stereotype that you look like a guy and you have to act like a guy. Uh, you cannot, when you behave like different, like in like a girlish way, you know, it's easy for them to be triggered, you know. So I was again feeling the same way. They were bullying me inside the camp. Like I, to them, I was a boy, but my behavior was a, like a girl. So with that, I, I locked down myself. I was all the time like, you know, isolated in Moria. That was the very first time that my friend uh, from Spain, and it was his goodbye party because he was living, uh, he was volunteering with uh, this uh, group. So he was leaving Greece, he was going back to Spain. So it was a goodbye party at his apartment. And what he did, he asked his friend to bring lipstick because I did not have anything, clothes, you know, women stuff. And that was the first time that I did women clothes, lipstick, you know, makeup. How, how did it feel? Oh my God, I, we were crying, all of us, you know. It was very first time that I was with other people. We were accepting and celebrating your true self. Yeah, it was like, it felt so... So me, that, oh my God. Do 
did the other people uh, continue? Yeah, like, uh, I had a great. Not with you, helping you. Yeah, and then that's how I started my journey. Speaking about this gender identity and the name change law, that was the biggest success, I would say, or the achievement I had from Greece, you know. <laughs> I would say that the diversity was the first step from there for trans people. That's that brings me a lot of freedom, let's say, or the true identity that I deserve. And that's give more opportunities into the into, in, in interro interrogation into the society. After five years, no, 2018, I started, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, five years of under hormonal medication, what I experienced, what I feel like, there, sh there should have a gender clinic, you know, where we can go and feel safe, because safety is the first place, you know, that, ooh, that makes comfortable. Do you feel that uh, Greece is a society that is has have has come to terms with having immigrants as a big part of their uh, social web is getting there i think you know in in generally uh wherever you are the biggest support is the finance therefore you need to have a job a proper lifestyle to build and everything is depends on your financial income and therefore is related with job in that sense, yeah, if you're stable, like, you know, if you, again, it's relate with the stereotype, like you look good, you're well-dressed, uh, you know, you look fancy enough, so sit in a restaurant, so they will like, hi, madam, but if you are look poor, if you are not fitting their standard, of course, you are discriminated, even if you're Greek. Yes, so it's a classist. Yeah, exactly, classist things. Um, uh, sexiest things that I face every day here in this society and mostly the immigrants people because they don't have certain lifestyle because lack of the job opportunities. I know most of them they work in a restaurant as a cleaners, you know, low, low as. So still there is discrimination but we are getting there. Progress has been started, started you know. We see changes. I, my asylum was uh, declined. You know, I had a, my lawyer from Hayas, uh, Mr. Vasilis, he helped me through a lot. You know, Marina Gulanu, after I got rejection, they make some noise, you know, that this is in, unbelievable. And then uh, I was re-examined again, my asylum, and then I got my asylum. Did you know that I'm the first immigrant trans woman who were able to change their name and gender? I was the first one. Oh, make it history. See, I mean, I, I consider Greece my home now. And I reborn here. Um, I wouldn't. I, w I wouldn't be lying. I mean, it would be a lie. I mean, I reborn. Literally started my transition. I changed my gender and name. And that day, I consider myself as a second birthday. But still, uh, I miss my my family. I mean, my mom. It's been seven years. I'm away from them. What do you think is like the, the highest priority uh, about people moving here and asking for asylum? or like asking to just to survive because in your case it wasn't just like looking for a better life it was a matter of survival survivor yes which is like a totally different uh, i would say a safe place a good shelter accommodation you know healthcare, education you know opportunities for work or such education uh, like working like IACAC, me, you know give a, a program for immigrants to have build their working skills and let them integrate in the society, more working opportunities. Um, I think that is the basic needs for human rights. And if you gave me that, you know, then I think I can work on it and I can make it best out of it. That every migrant deserves, I mean, everybody deserves. So.